Do you have a printer you want to share between multiple computers? Looking for another way to use a Raspberry Pi in your smart home? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to share a printer in your smart home using RPi and something called cups. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video. First, we're going to talk about what is CUPS. And trust me, if you haven't heard about it before, it's not a big deal. We'll go over the required items. We'll go through setting up the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll walk through sharing a printer. There's only two things you're going to need to get CUPS up and running on your network. First one is your Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm doing this with Raspberry Pi 4. If you've been upgrading to the 4s and you still got a couple of 3s available, this should be fine for that because for the most part, CUPS is not going to be that heavy duty of a requirement. Then what you'll need to do is just have a printer with a USB port on it. And if your Raspberry Pi is not going to be close to it, then you'll need to have a little bit of a cable to it going from probably what's going to be the, the squarish USB connector to the USB 2.0 connector that you're probably very familiar with. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do on this project is get the Raspberry Pi set up. Now, if you've already been through several times of setting up the micro SD card with Raspberry Pi OS, then you can skip ahead to the next section. If you're new to this or haven't done it for a while, then we'll go through this so that we get everything ready to go to install cups. So let's switch over here to our trusty desktop and I've got if I can get my mouse to cooperate with me we'll bring up Belena Etcher and it already sees the storage drive in place so we'll click on flash from file and I'm using the version of Raspberry Pi OS that is released in January of 2021. So we've got that. And we'll get that installing. And it's first gonna have to decompress it, then it'll actually copy it, and then most importantly, verify it so that you don't have to worry about possibly having a bad image. Now, if you don't see this screen at the very end, that's probably aired out somewhere in the verification process. You shouldn't see this message on a brand new SD card. If you do, or if you've been using the card for something else, you'll see on my desktop, I've got something called SD card formatter. Look for it exactly by the name. It's from the SD card industry group. And you can either do a quick format of the card or you can do a complete overwrite that should straighten out the card. If you still have verification problems, then return the card if it's under warranty or just go out and buy a new one. What we want to do, because I'm bringing up my Raspberry Pi and that's how I run most of the ones I've got are in a headless configuration, which means no keyboard, no monitor. We'll want to go down here and enable SSH during the boot up. So we'll go for text document. We'll just call it SSH with no file extension because by default uh, Raspberry Pi OS comes with SSH turned off. So we'll just put that on there and then we will eject the card if it will let us. And there's eject. Let's put it in the Raspberry Pi and get it booted up. Okay, got the Raspberry Pi booted up. So we're going to get logged into it. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and change its host name which the way I normally go do it is I go into raspy config. So it's pseudo space raspy config and we'll go system options, host name. Okay. 
and we will call this cups because that's what I'm going to be using it for. All right, finish. No, we're not going to reboot because we're going to do some updates to this before we get started. So sudo apt get update. Okay, just took it a little while to get started. And then we'll go out and repeat the command, but this time we will do upgrade. And even though this is a pretty new version of Raspberry Pi OS, still want to make sure we've got the latest files installed. And probably it's having a little bit of a problem because I've changed its name without rebooting because I was trying to minimize the number of reboots. That's probably what's giving it heartburn right now. Well, now that we've got all the updates put in place, let's just go ahead and reboot it. And then it should be ready to go here in about a minute. So we've got it named Cups. Now I want to go back into Raspi Config because if I can spell Raspi Config correctly here, because we want to make sure it's in the right time zone. It's localization options, time zone, and America. And I will set it for Chicago, which is the nearest time zone to me. And now we're set to go. So the next thing to do is we're going to install cups. So it's sudo apt get install cups. And we'll say yes, like we have a choice. got a few files to download but nothing major now, now that we've got cups installed we got a couple of changes to to go make so the first thing we want to do is add user pi to the LP admin group uh, we've already added the user group I mean, the username pi to the LP admin group. Now we're going to go into ETC cups. And what we want to do is before doing anything, because this bit me earlier and it's bit me several times. So you would have you thought I would have known at this point is we're going to make a backup of that file so that we can quickly go back to what the original was. If you're not familiar with some Linux commands, of course, sudo means we're we're temporarily stepping up to, uh, to root privileges. CP is short for copy. This is the name of the file that we're going to be copying. And then we're going to copy the same file name and just and append a dot BAK. Okay, that's done. Now with adding the user group pi, I mean the username pi, I don't keep saying, I keep saying user group. We want to go through and restart pi so that it has that change. Now if you, it, it says it's restarting, but we can also change that command to say status. And it shows you that it started, gives you the different process IDs. So it says active running. So that really, that's an important thing to, to know. Now, what we're going to go through and do here, and this is where you've got to really pay attention because I know the first time I went through it, I managed to shoot myself in the foot and wondered why it wasn't working. So we'll go over here and I, yes, I can type all this in, but when I've gone through the process several times, I just have notes and I found out that it's less apt to, to mistype. Okay, so we've got that. So you see by default it's going to port 631. Browsing on. Now, what we will do is under uh, location forward slash, which is this one right up here it says allow all now i'm going to add at local just to be on the safe side and i was trying to click in and put all that 
open the line up and then go up here with the mouse. Okay, we're allowing at local. That's probably not needed, but when I find a set of directions that, you know, I have a tendency to be on the cautious side and proceed it. So uh, restrict access to the admin pages. So we've done that. And make sure that has, okay, so those two lines are missing. So we're going to add that. So under location forward slash admin. And then we can just take out that extra line. Now under location admin conf. So you see by default, it says auth type default requires user at system. So we've got that. We're going to tell it basically those same two lines. Just right mouse click. We will come back out here. Uh, and server alias, we'll make sure that server alias is, if it's there, then that is a global command. So we don't have to put it under anything. Just scroll down here real quick. Cause sometimes they move stuff around. Okay. No, it is not. All right. Now what we'll do here is we'll just come down here. I know why that line is there. Server alias, fine, we've got that. Now let's save. We'll do control X, yes, enter. Now what we will do is we'll cups control remote any. Took that command with no errors and we don't have to do anything there. And now we need to restart it just to make sure that it's happy. It says restarting, but like before, we're going to make sure that it's started. It is, call, call me paranoid, but you know, once you've been burned once or twice, you wanna make sure that it's there. Now, what we have got to do is now we'll go open up a web 10.0.1.6, 631. Okay, that's a good sign. Now we'll go under administration. It may get, okay, it didn't. Sometimes it complains about you're not accessing it from the uh, the IP address, even though I've got a DNS entry for it. At this point, I've got an HP 2015 off to the side, and I've got it plugged in on USB to the Raspberry Pi. So we'll click add printer, upgrade required. Okay, and see, this is the error. And I... It's been consistent when it's done that. So we'll go add printer. Now this time for some reason, it's gonna take it. Now the key thing to notice is it says local printer. If it shows up here under discovered network printers, then that means it's plugged into the network, which not saying you can't do it that way, but you need to change your names a little bit so that if you have it available on the network, and this can still service it, but then you will want to make sure that if you have on, on USB as well, that you name that a little different. So we'll say, we're going to take local printer. We will click continue. Then I'm going to go over here and change that to where it says USB. That way we know if for some reason this were to be plugged into the network and some printers have network functionality, some don't, that we know how we're getting to it. And we'll say share printer. We will go... Uh, the 2100, we just may not have all the features, but that's, there may be ways around it. So we'll add printer, two-sided printer. Okay, so that we, we may be okay. And we'll set, we'll click on set default. And let's make sure it's talking. So we'll go under maintenance, we'll print test page. And it immediately came online and we'll see if everything looks right. So this is the test page that came out, but I would say we're probably okay. Got it close. It thinks it's, 
know, we told it's 2100 versus a 2015. Everything looks right. It's these little wheels here looks like it's trying to print color, but at this point it is up and running. When you're checking, you want to see if it's if the cups is talking to it, you go under maintenance, print, test page, and then almost immediately it came back. And if we go under jobs, show all, then it's showing you everything that's done. So you can actually reprint a job. So this is one of the advantages to having the Raspberry Pi out there is because there is a little bit of a print spool there that you can reprint a job of say if it jams and it doesn't want to print right or what you printed and you you know it's not on your system anymore though that at least gives you an option now to add the printer and this is just cups only i initially thought i was going to have to use samba to share it out and then i found out i wasn't so we'll click on add a printer now, see, here's where it's showing us what's going on. It, it, it correctly identifies the printer and says, at cups. And remember how we renamed the Raspberry Pi. So this is what's telling us that we're getting to it through the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is Windows 10. Mac should be fine as well. It's if you go earlier to Windows 10, you may have to try this a bit differently, but... I've gone to Windows 10, been on Windows 10 for several years, so this so far is appears to be working right. And as soon as this sets up the files on my system, and I initially I wasn't sure how much I would be using cups, but the fact I can reprint jobs easily, especially if you've been to a website and you printed a page and you've gone on trying to get back to that right page, well, if it's sitting out in the spooler, then you're good to go. And we'll print another test page. This way it's forcing Windows to go through cups to get to the printer. And the page just came out. Well, it pulled it back in to print to the other side. That's good to go. So really, this is something that is very handy to have. We'll click uh, close to close that out. Finish. And see, it's down here, it says at cups. So if you have more than one printer, then you know whether you're getting to it through cups or if you're talking to it direct. And there's nothing to say that you can't have the printer connected both ways. And here's why that's an advantage. When you do, it gives you an option that if you can't get to it over the regular network connection, you can switch over to going through cups it might be a little slower, but at least until you've got time to troubleshoot that printer, power cycle it, whatever you've got to do, you've at least got another way to print to it, which is not a bad option to have. But this is out of the box. You see, this was pretty much very straightforward to set up once I read some of the directions and, and did them the way they were supposed to. So it's, it's nice to know that you don't have to have a programming background in Linux to get something like this to work. So this is very handy to have at home i'm going to be leaving mine up and running and this way it's just one more it adds a layer of feature to it that you can reprint something if you're watching this on youtube you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe now and enable notifications we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching